Hey, Donna Schwartz here from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site for practical tips and solutions to improve your musical performance. Today, I wanted to answer um, this one question from one of my subscribers to my website, Sam. He says, Donna, Sam, <laughs> what are some tips for playing in a band? Now, that's a pretty, pretty broad, general type of question. So I'm going to approach it in a couple of ways. Tips for playing in a band. Well, first, let's approach how to get there, okay? How do you find bands? Depending on where you live, and, you know, I, I know it's different from one country to another, but also from one state to another, as well as one community to another. If you li live in a more urban city type of area, it's fairly easy to find playing situations, but it's a little harder if you're living in a rural setting. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not exactly very sure, you know, what happens with other countries. Um, a lot of folks in the U.S. use Craigslist to meet other people. It's gotten, in terms of music stuff, it's pretty reliable and fairly safe. Um, I know a lot of folks, and actually myself, I've gotten a lot of playing opportunities from that. Um, so you could look up posts in your area, do a little search, see if people are looking for, whether it's horn players or whatever instrument that you play. And... Um, you know, contact them and try to make sure that if they're established already, that they have a website or some videos up, check them out, check out their playing. Make sure that you feel that it's going to be the right fit for you. Um, other options, sources, it used to be that um, you'd go to like your local bookstore or music store and you'd look on the bulletin board and find, uh, you know, flyers and stuff. That's how I found a lot of my bands on Long Island uh, many years ago, but that seemed to have stopped. <laughs> Uh, which is really crazy. However, there are a lot of musical instrument stores like Sam Ashes, like Guitar Center, where they do have bulletin boards for people that um, are looking to join bands or to um, get in certain playing situations, whether it's community bands, orchestras, that kind of thing. So don't discount it. It's just not as popular as it used to be. I'm going to say definitely 10, 15 years ago, but um, you know, even maybe five years ago. So that's another source for you. Word of mouth also um, is another thing too. If you've got a bunch of friends that play instruments, they may know some bands that may need horn players or whatever, you know, whatever you that you play. The other thing too, people don't realize, check out local colleges, whether there's bulletin boards or just contacting, um, you know, the music department and just seeing if they know, you know, um, if they know whether it's community bands that need players or orchestras. Or even if, yeah, they do have a bulletin board, a lot of times people post things up there. So definitely ch check out those types of uh, information for you. The other great thing, Facebook groups. Um, most areas have their own local Facebook groups, like there's, you know, groups for Los Angeles, where I'm from right now. Um, there's also stuff for Long Island, where I used to be from. So you could check out Facebook and see if there's any local music groups where people are posting, you know, they're posting their videos or maybe posting even that they need players and stuff like that. So definitely check out those things. Now, before you start looking, what should you be doing? Well, let's say you like playing cover tunes, okay? So cover tunes could encompass, you know, the, some of those classic rock tunes, Motown stuff, um, pop stuff that's got horn stuff in it, you know, if you're a horn player like me. So really get to know those tunes really, really well. And what I would do is I'd check out some of the local bands that are around too. That's another opportunity too. You know, just go out, support your local bands, and, you know, make friends with the horn players and stuff like that, or the other instrumentalists in the band as well. But check out their set list. What are they playing? You know, and write it down, and then learn the tunes. And I don't just mean learn your part. Okay, so here's the thing that a lot of people tend to do, especially when you're a horn player. This isn't so much true for guitar players or chordal-based instruments like guitars, keys, and, and even bass. Um, us horn players tend to just learn the horn lines without thinking about, okay, what's the form? <laughs> what are the chords that go underneath these horn lines? Super important. The more you know about a tune, the more comfortable you're going to be not only playing it, but also soloing over it. The more you're going to own it, the more you own a tune, the more comfortable you're going to be playing it. Just period. Think about it this way. You're speaking in front of a bunch of people. You're speaking with your friends. Pretty comfortable, right? You know how to speak whatever language that you speak. 
Um, people start to get nervous when they spark, start to speak in front of a whole bunch of people. For some reason, we, we start to second guess ourselves. We really shouldn't because you know what? For the most part, if you have a clear message, what you need to say, everything should be fine. But when you're playing um, in a band type of situation, you know, you want to be able to know what's going on in that song, see how that horn line fits in. I'm just thinking off the top of my head, like Bruno Mars tune, um, Uptown Funk. Right, that part. Okay, know what's going on underneath there. Understand how those rhythms fit into the song. How does it fit in with the rhythm section? Okay, how are you locking into the rhythm section? Okay, all part of the owning, owning it. So that's what I would suggest. Definitely check out set lists of local bands that you like and, you know, some of the popular songs that they're playing. See if they've got a website. They may list all the tunes that they play. Okay, it's another thing to think about too. Um, in terms of playing with a band, you don't want to start auditioning yet until you're really, uh, what's the word, confident with your tone. You know, you may be able to fly all over the horn or whatever instrument you play, but if your tone isn't solid, people aren't going to hire you, all right? And worse, people in the audience are going to not listen to you. They're going to kind of turn you off and treat you like background music. <clears throat> and that's like, that's kind of the worst thing. So you want to make sure that your tone is really full and nice sounding. Now, if you want to get a nice full tone on the saxophone, well, you could do two things. You could sign up for my, uh, for my website, for my free weekly newsletter, where you get practical tips and solutions. But right now, you also get a free video, three tips to fatten up your saxophone tone. And if you really want to take it to the next step, I have a course coming out, Get a Killer Saxophone Tone, and that takes you step by step to producing a really nice, rich, fat sound throughout the entire register of the horn, okay? To the point where I'm bringing you the exercises that I teach you, I'm bringing you to the Altissimo uh, register. So I'll put those links below in the show notes um, so that you can join the newsletter, but also get on the wait list for my course when it comes out very soon. So tone, hugely important. Before you pursue auditioning for bands or checking them out, Make sure your instrument's in really good shape, okay? The worst thing that can happen is that, you know, you go to, like, your first rehearsal and all of a sudden, like, you know, something, a pad pops out or, you know, whatever. Or you're, you've got so many leaks in your horn, you know, and you've got to play a, you know, a, a tough line or something. It's just not coming out the way you know it can come out. Check your horn out. You know, every horn player, whether it's trumpet, saxophone, trombone, get your horn checked once a year. Have it fully looked over, Okay. Um, I'm not saying you need an overhaul, but just a check. You know, a lot of times things get adjusted. Weather, humidity, um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to look for? If you live in high altitude areas versus, you know, valleys and stuff like that, lots of things can affect the condition of your horn. So check, get your horn checked out before you start going on those aud auditions. What's really super important also um, if you want to have success being in a band or playing in a band is your attitude. If your attitude sucks, <laughs> you're not going to be long for that band. You know, it reminds me of my college days. Um, there were a couple of really great players, but they, uh, they weren't the most approachable people. They weren't the nicest people. Sometimes they were, but a lot of the times they weren't. And you have to, or they should actually have to wonder why they weren't getting called a lot for gigs. So it's your attitude that really counts. And when you're in, the, in a band, I mean, think about it. All these great classic bands like the Beatles, Stones, all that kind of thing. Um, when the Beatles broke up, that was like, that was horrific, right? But, you know, we all have our different personalities. But the thing is that we have to adjust. You know, being in a band is like, it's a relationship. So we have to, there's some give, there's some take. And some people don't want to give. They'd rather just take. So you don't want to go in with that attitude. You have a good positive attitude. Have an attitude that contributes to the band, to the team. I talk to my students all the time how being in concert band is being on a team. When one person's absent or feels like they don't want to show up for class, you've just, infect, just affected the entire team. 
okay? Because we feel it. We know it. The balance is off, okay? Every single person's important. Same thing with whether it's a jazz band, jazz quartet, rock covers group, whatever, okay? So have a great attitude, positive attitude. You may not agree with everything that the band says, but you know what? Just take it in stride because if you really care about how that band will sound, um, you put your 150% in, and that's really going to bring you far with that band or any playing situation that you want to be in. So that's my tip for this week, for today. Thanks for joining me. Again, please check out my website, donnaschwartzmusic.com. Sign up for my weekly newsletter. It's free. You get that free video also, Three Tips to Fatten Up Your Tone. And don't forget about my course, Get a Killer Saxophone Tone. Um, sign up for the waiting list for now. And I hope to see you not only in that course, but also with my newsletter. Thanks again. Take care. On that note, have a great day.